In this video, you learn how to create ground beams and wall foundations. Ground beams can be modelled with a standard beam command and will form a monolithic structure with the other foundations. However, if the ground beam is supporting a wall, then you can use the wall foundation tool. This wall foundation tool can also be used for retaining wall footings where you can set a separate heel and toe length to get an eccentric foundation. Go ahead and open up project A. The project opens in the 3D view. In this video, we're going to use two tools. We're going to use the wall foundation to place a foundation underneath our walls. And then we're going to use ground beams to connect all of the pile caps together. Let's begin by using the wall foundation tool. On the structure ribbon in the foundation panel, you can see here we have structural wall foundation. Let's go ahead and select this tool. In the properties palette in the type selector, you'll see here that we have two different types of wall foundation. We have a bearing footing, which is centered about the wall, and we have a retaining footing, which is eccentric. Let's select bearing footing. We'll then go ahead and select edit type. And here we'll duplicate. So we're going to make a bearing footing. It's going to be 1000 wide by 800 deep. So I'll just type in 1000 by 800 for the name and click OK. We can then set our structural material. So this is going to be the same grade of concrete we've used throughout this project, which is casting place C40. Notice here we have a structural usage. Now currently it is set to bearing, so you can see we simply set a width and a foundation thickness. However, if I set this to retaining, you can now see that we have a toe length, a heel length and a foundation thickness. In our example, we want this to be a bearing footing. So we can set our width to 1000 and our foundation thickness here to 800. Notice here we can also set a default end extension length. This is the distance that the foundation will project beyond the wall. So in this case here, let's type in 300. And here you can see do not break it inserts, that's on. And what that essentially means is if we had a door or a window at the wall foundation level, it would then break a hole in it. But of course, once that's ticked, that will stop the foundation from breaking. So we really want that ticked at all times. Let's click OK, and we're now ready to place out our wall foundations. Now I'm going to do this in the 3D view. I'm going to start by placing out our wall foundations in this area here. Now, of course, I could go ahead and select every single wall separately, but there's a much quicker way of doing this. You can see that we have this select multiple option up on the context ribbon. So I'll select this, and now I can just go ahead and select walls. Notice there's a filter on this, so it will only select walls anyway. And then click the green finish tick. And you can now see that we have our wall footings placed automatically. Let's do a similar thing on the left hand side of the structure just for these walls over here. So again, I can select multiple. We'll make a selection set just of those walls. And again, select the finish tick. And you can now see those strip footings are placed. So that's a very fast and effective way of getting those footings in. Okay, let's release the command by selecting modify. Before we go ahead and place out our ground beams, let's change the level of the top of foundation. To do this, you can see here that currently our top of foundation is set to one meter. I'd like this to be directly below my slab. So if I select my slab here, I can see that that's 300. So here, I'm going to set this to negative 300. Now to do this, we'll do negative 300 millimeters because of course this is configured to meters. You can do that, or of course you could have just typed in 0.3. And you can now see all of the foundations have updated to that new level. OK, we're now ready to place out some ground beams. So to do this in the project browser, let's go ahead and open up negative 01 top of foundation. On the structure ribbon, you'll note here that we have the beam tool. Let's select the beam command. In the properties palette, we'll go ahead and select a concrete member. So in this case, I'm going to start by using the 300 by 600 concrete rectangular beam. We need to create a beam that's 500 by 500. So here I'll select edit type. We can duplicate and we'll type in 500 by 500. And of course here I can type in those dimensions for the base and the height. And I'll click OK. For the structural material, we'll leave this set to what it is and we'll link this afterwards to our global parameter. OK, so let's now start to place out some ground beams. I'm going to begin in the top left hand corner here and I'm going to start by selecting the end of this wall here and I'll go to the centre of this pile cap. I'll now continue to go around the centre of the pile caps 
And of course here, if you look on the ribbon, you can see I've got chain function enabled. So that allows me to uh, draw a continuous line of beams as I go down. We can then come to the strip foot in here. I'll stop the beam there and then I'll start it on the other side of the wall foundation. And again, we can go around here and connect to the strip footing over here. Again, to connect the strip footings together, we can use the beam tool again, just to connect these up. And again here, we can then come through and do the remainder of the pile caps in here. Okay, so there's a few perimeter uh, ground beams set up there. There is another way to do this. We can simply use the grids to place out the ground beams. So let's go ahead and select on grids. What I'm going to do here is make a window selection of everything in the project. And you can now see Revit's previewing all of our ground beams. Now, of course, we'll need to delete some of the ground beams around the core area. We haven't put in the foundation slab there yet, but we can obviously do that when we're ready. Again, on the front of the structure here, it's my intention to use curved ground beams. So I'll just go ahead and select the finish tick here. And then Revit will then go ahead and create all of those ground beams. It'll just take a few seconds. Now we can select modify to release the command and we can now tidy things up a bit. And here I'm just going to delete some of these ground beams that we don't require. Obviously we can add these in once we've got our uh, main foundation slab in. Uh, on the front of the structure here, again, we don't want these being uh, linear. We want these to be curved members around the front here. And you can see we've got a few more to add in over here. That's no problem. We can do that. But first I want to address the curved ground beams in this area of the structure. So I'm going to select this ground beam here, right mouse click, and I'll say create similar. Or we could type in CS, which is the keyboard shortcut. On the draw panel, I'll select start end radius arc. And of course here I've still got chain enabled. Okay, so we can now start to place out our foundations. So I'll start here. And I'm just going to snap to the grid there. So I've got start, end, grid, start, end, grid. And of course, the start point is chaining from the previous position. So really, all I'm doing is picking the end point and then the position on grid. In this example here, we're going to the center over there of that pile cap. Well, sorry, of the grid intersection. And we'll then finalize that back over here. Okay, and there's our curved ground beams on the front of the structure. So like I've said, we've got a couple more to add in. So we can right click and create similar. And then we can just model these in. I'm going to take chain off now. We don't need that on for this example. So we're placing these last few ground beams. Okay, and there's our wall footings and ground beams complete. Let's take a look at this in the 3D view. Yep, so we can now see we have all of our foundations in place. Now, the last thing I want to do here is just make sure that all of the ground beams are using the correct grade of concrete. So we can select one of the beams, right mouse, select all instances, visible in view. That will get all of those ground beams. And of course, here in the instance parameters, we can simply now associate this to our global parameter that we've been using, which is C40. And now you'll see all of those ground beams update and they all become monolithic. Okay, so let's make sure that we've saved our project and that completes this video.